So we've learned that how to activate the debugger by specifying, specifying, specifying the line we want. Now we'll learn the commands that are used for debugging. The PDB debugger has a set of keywords that are used for debugging. So first such a command is where or w is also acceptable. So we're going to type like this where or w which tells us the line, function, and module in, the, in which the debugger is activated. So it's so-called a stack trace. So we're going to run this, this test script again in, the, in our command prompt. So I, changed, I opened the directory where this file is located. So what we're going to do, we're going to type in the script's name. So test.py is my script's name. And after that, we're going to write a W and then we're gonna press enter and then and then we get the hold on a sec um, yeah so actually whoops my bad so we just after when we're in the TDB I made a mistake my, my apology my apologies so while we're in the debugger we type in W it's a debugging command so yeah there we go so it indicates where we started. And we also have another useful command, which is list. And, does, and without parameters, list five lines of code. So list, it lists five lines of code before and after the line in which the debugger is activated. It, also, it is also possible to pass two integers separated by a comma. So we're gonna have list and then m, for this is just an example, m comma n, those are two numbers. If the numbers are in an increasing order, say two, three, the debugger will list the code from the line m to, at line m to line n. If the numbers are in decreasing order, so like say three, two, then the debugger will list n, li n lines of code starting with line m. So let's do an example. So here we're in the debugger. Let's start this over. So you can do run to restart it again, but for some reason it's not working. But anyway, we just run, run it again. Okay, now we're in the debugger again. And now we're going to write list. And then we're going to do, uh, let's see. So we did list the first time. Now we're going to do three and six. So it, it, it displays lines three to six in our code. And let's try now list three, two, and displayed from line three and up to, and two more lines after that. So the, com and so moving on, we have two other commands for moving through the stack trace, for, through the stack trace are up, so we have two of them. So we have up for moving through older procedure calls and down for moving through newer procedure calls in the stack. So we're going to make a new piece of code. We're gonna make something new. So exit this. All right, so we're out of that. So we're going to erase all this. We're gonna make some new code that's going to be used for this, um, these two up and down commands. So we have up and we have down like that. You'll see how they work in the in the debugger. So let's make some new code. We're going to define a couple functions right here. So <clears throat> we're going to define function one with parameter a. So if a is is um if it's a remainder of two, we have remainder two. Then return true. And then else, this is just an example. So and then return if not return false. And then we're gonna have another function, so def font two, it's gonna take an argument x, and then we're going to have if type of x, if type of x is int, if type x is int, then we're going to start the debugger. So PDB set trace. And then we're going to print function one 
with argument with argument x. If not, then we're going to have something else. We're going to see that in a sec. So if not, we're just going to print print not defined. All right. So and after that, we're going to have we're going to call function two with argument three. All right. So we're going to now run this in our command in our command prompt. So in the console. So we're going to do test.py. Okay. Now we open the debugger. So now let's see. So now it's at this line print f u n one. So it's at the debugger started at that line. So now let's do up. And it, as you can see, it moved up. It went down to um, f u n function two in the main. And so let's do down now. And it went back to print function with that first line. So what we can see here is that we can iterate through the old up into the oldest or the newest frames. So if you're, when we talk about frames, we can observe that a term, we can observe that term as a block of code a function or a procedure that is that performs a certain task and contains its own domain, so to speak. That domain contains variables that are necessary for its use. And to check the values of those variables during the debugging, we can use the command arcs or just a. So let's do arcs. And there we go. We have our argument x equals three from this function to where x equals three. So if we run the same script and then we do that, I just actually just did that. So, um, so when we did that in our debugger, we did args, we got the, um, value. So the values themselves can be printed out using commands P or PP for some reason it's not working, but anyway, it's used. PP is used for formatting output of more complex statements, but since it doesn't work here, we won't demonstrate it really, but, Anyway, the point, the real point I'm trying to make is here that we can actually change the values of certain arguments that are available in our program through the debugger. And that is done by doing the following. So we have an exclamation point. So first let's type in args again. So we have x equals three and we can change that value by using exclamation point before the arguments name variable name. So exclamation point x equals four now. And then when we write args again, X is going to be four. So the next couple um, commands we have are step, next, until, and return. So let's do that. Let's anal let's analyze these a little further inside this program we this script we already made. So let's type step. What step did? It continues the execution of the program until the next statement, which was this one right here, def function one which we, cause we went from the beginning. So actually that's, yeah, that's fine. Okay. So the next command, which we have is similar to step only it doesn't go into the body of the function that is being called. So actually let's run step again and it went into the next line of the code. So let's do next. As you can see, it moves all the way down to return false. And so what this shows us, instead of going to the next line, it goes to the next statement in the same block in which it currently resides. <coughs> Excuse me. And then we have until. So this command is like next, except that it continues until the execution reaches a line in the code that is higher than the current value. And this is most used mostly to skip loops in the program. So it went straight to return false again, because there was no loops. So and the last command we're going to talk about is return, which continues the execution until it runs into hashtag the return into the return statement. So let's do return. So after that it did Let's do return again. 
and it went to function two. All right, so our previous commands are not so, so all these commands we just did are pretty, are not that efficient when it comes to bigger programs. So for that reason, we define breakpoints.